Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a great conference. So my talk, uh, 10 Years and a Million Links, is about the last decade of work I've been doing on trying to connect taxonomic names to the literature. Uh, before I start, I should acknowledge uh, there's, a, there's a paper that describes this work just been published in Biodiversity Data Journal uh, with the assistance of the Bicycle Project. Um, open access is wonderful, except when you don't have any money uh, to publish. So uh, thank you for Bicycle for supporting this work. I confess I'm, I'm still somewhat stunned that um, with, the, with the current state of taxonomic databases in some ways. What you're seeing here is on the left is an entry in Index Cuensis from 1970. This is a printed book. And here's a record for one particular species. Uh, and you can see this, this species comes from a publication called Acta Botner, uh, volume 12, page 73, I think. Fast forward to the present day, more than 50 years later, we have IPNI, a website powered by Java, Docker, Helm, I have no idea what Helm is, uh, Google Cloud, state-of-the-art technology, and what it presents us with is exactly the same information. So I think the problem here is we have been very good at digitizing, converting printed material into online material, uh, but the next step is to be digital. What we want to do is convert this from simple text into information we can use. For example, we want to have LSIDs for taxonomic names. Uh, we want them to link to DOIs, you can see behind me, and have them connected in some way that we can compute upon them and, and do something interesting. So that's the goal. So what I've been trying to do in the last <coughs> decade or so is take taxonomic names from these three different sources, Index Fungorum, IPNI and Index of Organism Names, or ION. This covers fungi, plants, and animals, and link that to literature. So to give you a sort of sense of the scale, the first row you can see there lists the number of names, number of LSIDs for names. There's about half a million Index Fungorum, up to about over 5 million in ION, 7.5 million in total. The second row is the number of names that have some sort of publication linked to them. So about 444,000 for Index Fungorum, uh, up to 1.7 million in the other databases, so 3.8 million in total. Now, I'm going to emphasize linking uh, these names to DOIs. Why DOIs? Well, DOIs are kind of part of a, a much sort of richer ecosystem. So these are all the kind of things that are built on this idea that publications have DOIs. So, for example, if you want to bookmark a paper, if you want to get access to it legally or maybe not so legally, uh, if you want to link it to your own um, uh, list of publications, see what Twitter is saying and so on, all of these things are connected by DOIs. And probably the most recent kind of example of this are these really cool AI tools you can see on the left, which summarize papers. You can even literally chat to a PDF. All of these are built on the idea publications can be discovered and identified using DOIs. So I want the taxonomic literature to be part of that. I also want to sort of exploit the connections that DOIs offer. DOIs are highly connected. They're connected to things like ORCID IDs, you can connect to people, you can connect to institutions, so raw identifiers, which you can see hiding behind me. So the idea would be that if we connect taxonomic names to DOIs, then we get part of that network. We can find out uh, where are these taxonomers based, based, who's funding them, and so on. Now, I should point out that obviously that there's, there's different ways to, to do this. So I focus very much at the what I call the work level. So for me, it's linking a taxonomic name to a publication. That publication has a DOI. And there are lots of reasons for doing that. DOIs are kind of fun. That's one approach. There are other approaches possible. Um, so you might find that, that linking to a publication isn't granular enough. You really want to link to an individual page. Um, so, for example, you'll see in taxonomic databases links to BHL using their page identifiers. You might want to link to a page in a PDF and so on. And that gives you an immediate link to where the name occurs in the publication. That's great. The downside of that is some of these identifiers aren't necessarily persistent. And the page you link to... Uh, can depend on what you're looking at. Are you looking at a web page, a PDF, or so on? And of course, the third option, which most of us are, are probably well aware of, is, is a Plasi approach, where instead of identifying the whole work or indeed an individual page, they take 
a block of text about a particular species, uh, maybe with some figures, package that together as a treatment, and that becomes a single unit. Uh, this is a really interesting way of, for example, breaking through paywalls. Um, the flip side is you sometimes lose context. You can't necessarily read the whole paper. You're just given a bit of information about a particular species. So these are three different approaches, and I'm focusing on option one, the level of the individual publication or work. Now, having said DOIs are great, uh, not all DOIs are equal, and of course not everything has a DOI. Uh, most publications that we deal with have a cross-ref DOI, which you can see just sort of hiding by my head, but there are lots of other places that issue DOIs. Some of them are based in particular countries. Some of them have particular kind of um, things that they might focus on. For example, data site, it's about data. So we do have issues about using DOIs and also there are lots of publications which don't have DOIs. So at the end of the day, we still have to go hunting through the web sometimes to get information on publications. So how did I make these mappings? Um, to cut a long story short, I mean, one approach is if you have the full citation in the database, then you can just try and map it to Crossref. Uh, if you don't get a DOI from Crossref, there might be a DOI somewhere else. But essentially, you end up building a database of publications that you still have on your computer, and you try and match these things. That works pretty well for animals. Um, plants and fungi, so Index fungorum and Ipni, tend to have what I call micro citations. So we've already encountered one of these. They don't tell you the citation of the work. They say it occurs in this journal, in this volume, in this page. And then you need to find, OK, what article does that refer to? And that becomes quite challenging. You need a, a database of publications to figure that out. So a lot of work has basically gone into, into doing that. Now, if you're going to do all this work, the next question is, OK, so what do you, what do, you do with it? Where do you store it? And there's a couple of options here. So one approach, which I've used before, is <clears throat> I make a database, I make a website to go with it. A good example of this is, is Bionames, which I set up about a decade ago, uh, which has lots of animal names and links to publications. But that's it's another website, it's another database, um, and essentially we keep making these sort of silos of, of individual data. One thing that's really interesting is the arrival of Checklist Bank. So another approach is to make these mappings and store them there. So one thing I've, I've started to do is take a copy of a database that may already be in Checklist Bank, augment it by adding DOIs and other identifiers to it, and I put that into Checklist Bank as a new database, linked to the original one, so we're citing the original source, but it has all this extra information. So anybody who wants those links can go and get them from Checklist Bank. The other nice thing is, of course, the original data provider can go and get that information as well. So sometimes in the past, I've made these links, offered it to people, they're not in a position to use them. Um, we put them here, if and when they're ready, they're waiting to be used. Now, because a big chunk of this work is making a bibliographic database to, to match to, what happens to that? I'm trying to move as many of this, uh, these records as possible into Wikidata. This is a whole other talk, um, but if you want to get some sort of insight into what's out there, there's a, a little browser I built called Alec, there's a link there, um, which allows you to navigate through publications and journals and taxons and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's where the information on literature is heading. Of course, you actually want to read the literature. It's not enough to have DOIs or identifiers. Um, there's lots and lots of PDFs out there. Many of these are disappearing as journal websites come and go. So I've started archiving as much of this as possible in Internet Archive, and there's just an extraordinary wealth of material out there that I'm trying to capture, uh, as indeed are uh, many other people. OK, so enough of the background. How do we actually do? So. Based on this work, um, we're at the point where um, so we have about 3.8 million names linked to a publication. Uh, about 0.7 million of those have now been linked to a DOI, um, and also been linking to other identifiers. And all this is going into Wiki, Wikidata. So the final row you can see is about is about a million taxonomic names spread across these three databases that are linked to either a DOI uh, or an identifier in Wikidata. 
what can we do with this mapping? Well, apart from all the wonderful things about having DOIs and uh, also making these connections to ORCIDs and so on, um, I've built a little tool to sort of demonstrate the utility of this. This is something called Species Site. And the motivation here is taxonomists are forever complaining. We don't get enough citations. And then if you ask, well, OK, here's a species. What's the citation for the original description? It's often hard to find that. Species Site tries to solve this. You put in a species name, it talks to the mappings that I've created that are stored in Checklist Bank, and if it finds a link to a publication, it comes back with a full citation, hopefully a DOI or a link to Wikidata, and if you're really lucky, uh, a PDF. So you can actually go and look at the species description and so on. This is just one simple little tool built on top of these mappings. OK, so if you want these mappings, they are available in Checklist Bank. They're also available in uh, Zenodo. There are DOIs for each of these mappings. Um, there's lots of other things I could tell you about, the sort of uh, how these literature coverage has changed over time and how that varies across the databases. I don't have time to do that. If you're curious, um, have a look at the paper. There's a DOI behind me, cleverly obscured, which you can read more um, about this project. Um, thank you very much for your time.